Harbor, like an iceberg, is four-fifths underwater. And underwater is where the trouble usually lies. In construction in the first place, and later in repairs as time and the sea take their toll. The day started with the same two routine jobs ahead of me. One, checking the harbor damage. Two, teaching my new assistant about it as we went along. But the routine ended abruptly when we broke for lunch. I had no idea that within 24 hours, I was going to be a thousand miles from home and 300 feet underneath the sea. And not because I wanted to. The funny thing about trouble, you can always feel it coming. Steve McKay. They told me up at Marineland I'd find you here. How are you? I'm an underwater salvage. This is my partner, Ed Romer. Glad to meet you, Mr. Nelson. Mr. Riker. Mr. Riker? Mr. McKay. Over. Mr. Nelson, we got a business proposition to put up to you. You got a minute? Oh, I'm sorry. I wouldn't be able to handle another job right now. Well, this isn't just another job, Mr. Nelson. But just another man won't do. We got to have a man that can dive deep. Without an air hose. We're bucking a strong current, Mr. Nelson. A hard hat diver can't hold bottom. It's got to be a man with a lung on his back. A good man. Our bottom is about 300 feet, maybe a little bit more. Ed here doesn't dive at all. My limit's 150 feet. I'm sorry. We'll pay you $5,000 for three, maybe four days' work at the outside, no matter what we come up with. What are you after? A sure thing. I've been working salvage for 16 years, Mr. Nelson. Everything from hull scraping to dredging, you name it. I'm no Johnny come lately. What's your point? My point is that I know underwater salvage like I know the back of my own hand. I know the jobs to take and the jobs to leave alone. I learned the hard way to pass up sunken treasure, pirates' gold. Those pieces of eight are never there. But this one I don't pass. You mean you're going after gold? Salvage. The safe in the captain's cabin of a ship at the bottom of the sea. The name of the ship is the Santa Felicia. She went down May 28th, 1920, off the coast of La Cruz. That's a little town in Mexico, about halfway down the coast, on the Pacific side. We're going after gold dust, Mr. Nelson. A hundred thousand dollars worth. Good luck. Make that five thousand dollars I offered you a bottom figure. A guarantee. The top, uh... 20% of what we come up with. No, thanks. Our salvage boat's a UR-7. The best there is. No, I know. I saw her this morning when you when you anchored. It's a dolphin, isn't it? You sound like you've heard of her before. I have. I hope we haven't taken up too much of your time, Mr. Nelson. No, no, Mr. McKay. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Riker. I don't get it, Mike. Didn't you want that job? No, and for a good reason. A buddy of mine once stole from McKay up in Alaska, and he... I'd rather not talk about it, believe it or not. Of course not. I was just wondering. Hey, how come I got all dressed up? Well, I thought I'd go in town for lunch today. Ready? <laughs> Nobody else. I'll see you, Mike. Now, you'll be back in an hour. I don't get sidetracked. <laughs> all right. late getting back, but I went to work without him, on the theory that you're entitled to a few extra minutes when you're taking a girl to lunch. I had no way of knowing that Billy had something far different in mind, something he didn't want me to know about, something that was worth a quarter mile swim out to the dolphin.
accomplished there, I was to learn several hours later when after completing the day's work, I came back up to the surface. By this time, I was good and worried about Billy's absence. It wasn't like him to goof off. Hi. Mike, Billy took that job you turned down in Mexico. Oh, so that's what he's been up to, huh? <laughs> Look, they're going now. He talked to them on their boat this afternoon. Then he came to see me. He said you didn't want to take the job. Did he tell you I had a reason? Yes, we argued about it. I said he shouldn't go unless you did. And he said that he was doing it for us, that we'd be able to get married and have our own home with the money that he'd get from the job. Oh, Mike, I'm so afraid for him. Take it easy. Take it easy. We'll do something. What, Mike? is a sleepy little fishing town, fringed with palms and lapped by the Pacific. But the crew of the Dolphin wasn't really interested in the town. Well, Billy boy, treasure of the Santa Felicia should only be about a mile away from us now. Well, I'm ready. Why don't we start? Take it easy, Billy. We'll start in the morning. Let's get into the cruise and get those supplies while the stores are still open. Buenos dias, senores. Welcome to La Cruz. What are you doing here? I thought you didn't like our proposition. Well, I had a change of heart. How'd you know we were in La Cruz? You told me, remember? Much faster by plane. Went to a lot of trouble and expense. Less than five hundred dollars. What that is against uh, one half of twenty percent of uh, one hundred thousand dollars? We don't need you. Yes, we do, for insurance. Two deep divers are better than one. You don't mind, Billy? Well, of course not. It's great. Mike, I'm sorry I walked out on you the way I did. No notice or anything. I just thought it was a good idea to... No crime of being young and ambitious. Is there, Mr. McKay? No crime at all. Get your gear, Nelson. Oh, wait a second, Mike. I'll give you a hand. Don't say it, Ed. I know what I'm doing. I don't care what Nelson's reasons are for coming down here. Until we get what we're after, we need him. To get what we're after. information boils down to this. After a month of questioning everyone we could find who actually saw the Santa Felicia go down, we came up with two witnesses, each of them pretty reliable, and each of them a good distance apart, who had something definite to say about where the, the boat sank. Now, uh, the lighthouse keeper here at point A took a bearing at the time, and he said it was almost directly north-northeast. Actually, it was 24 degrees. Now, over here at this point B, there was a fisherman mending his nets, and he said he saw the ship go down. And it was in a direct line with some rocks off the end of this spit of land. And we shot an azimuth from this point right along this line. It's almost directly northwest. Actually, it's 313 degrees. Now, when we start searching, we'll ride out along this line. We'll have a man here at point A on a theodolite. That'll be Ed up there. And he'll keep us on this north-northeast course, this 24-degree course. And over here at point B, we'll have another man on a field line. That'll be you, Billy. And he'll be shooting along this 313-degree line. And when we ride into your sights, we'll be at the point of intersection. We put out a marker, boy, we're in business. We start diving. Sounds easy enough. Well, don't let this diagram fool you, Billy. This is only the center of the search area. Well, how far out does the search area extend? To the Santa Felicia. <laughs> By 
By noon the next day, the dolphin was underway. Romer, sighting through the theodolite at the lighthouse, kept us on the 24-degree course laid out by his pal McKay. Meantime, Billy waited in the reef with his theodolite sighted along the 313-degree bearing. Despite my misgivings, I found that the four of us worked well as a team. McKay planned it well. As we came into Billy's sight, I got the signal and dropped the marker boy. That's it. It was too late now to start searching underwater, but next morning, Billy and I were ready for our first descent. Billy, I, uh... I told Betty that I was coming down here. I figured that she might worry less if she knew we were together. Yeah, you're right, Mike. I sure apologize for the way I acted. I did get you down here, though, didn't I? I think you're gonna thank me for it, too. Well, I hope you're right, Billy. I can always use a little that gold dust. <laughs> oh, I think you're wrong about McKay. They both seem like real nice guys to me. I could be wrong. Listen, let's talk about diving now, huh? We'll, uh, we'll get on twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. And uh, we'll spend 20 minutes on the bottom looking the remainder of the time to decompress coming up. I'll, uh, I'll get down to the bottom in the first dive. And uh, you wait for me at the 150-foot level in case I need any help. I'm taking my spear gun. No telling what you might run into down there. That's a good idea. We're going in. Good luck. We swam down together and separated as agreed for the search. As I set off, I was still full of doubts, despite what I had told Billy. McKay's real plan was, he was still following through on this part of his agreement. While we were on the bottom, he came down the guideline to 150 feet to wait for us. I was the first to get back to McKay and report no luck. Billy was only a few seconds behind me, and his luck was no better than mine. Decompressing slowly, the three of us started back to the surface. Though McKay had been smart enough to warn that our buoy was only the center of the search area, we hadn't made any progress after two more dives. All of us were playing it straight, McKay and Roma doing nothing to arouse new suspicion, and I doing nothing to suggest to Billy that this wasn't the happiest of all possible treasure hunts. 
We continued to follow the same dive and search plan. Suddenly, there it was, a skeleton of a ship, a playground for a school of fish. It was eerie and sinister, this haunted house on the bottom of the ocean, corroding slowly to death. I swam through her to confirm that she was indeed the Santa Felicia. And then, with time running out, marked her position before starting up. Mac! Marker buoy! So far, everything McKay and Roma had promised had turned out true. Next question, was there a safe in the captain's cabin? And was there a bag of gold dust in the safe? The safe was there all right, and it had been built even more sturdily than the ship itself. After decades in the bottom of the sea, it still remained firmly locked. We couldn't budge it, which meant we'd have to come down again the next morning with an acetylene torch and cut it open. If ever McKay was going to make a move, this had to be the time. And it was. What's the matter? Hello, uh, my regulator doesn't work. Steady floor. Must be in my, uh, my high pressure block. Take a little while to fix it. How long? Well, depends what I run into. Might be an hour. I don't want to wait that long. I want to get that gold dust. Well, I don't want to send Billy down there alone. Well, my gear's all right. I'll go down with him. Oh, what do you say, Billy? Looks like you're elected. And you want me to get out? No, I can make it all right. I shouldn't take you long to cut through. Probably half rust anyway. I'll meet you at 150 feet. Good enough. Got that torch ready? Sure. It was a calculated risk letting Billy go down alone, but I had a rough idea of what would happen next. I'm getting as bad as Billy. I can't wait any longer either. Keep your fingers crossed. I'm going down. Well, all we have to do now is wait, huh? That's right.
any minute, Billy will be coming up from the bottom now. I fixed this regulator. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I'm going down. I wouldn't do that. Oh, well, why not? It's better than staying here and getting shot. Shot? Yeah. That's your plan, isn't it? That's why you fouled up my regulator. You wanted to split us up so that McKay could take care of Billy at the halfway mark. That is, uh, after he collected the gold dust from him. And at the same time, you could take care of me up here on deck. Close? Close? Yeah, it should be. It's the same stunt that you pulled on my friend, Fred Simpson, up in Alaska. I didn't only spy on you last night, Romer. I fouled up some equipment, too. Go ahead, try it. I took out the firing pin. as quickly as possible because now I had to get down before Billy reached McKay. That was a few seconds too late. I dived for McKay. He fought like a madman, no holes barred. Everything a weapon, even the bag of gold dust. Billy grabbed the gold, and McKay lost interest in me. final irony, that the rotting leather of the bag be ripped in the struggle, and grain by grain the gold dust lost forever in the sea. Most of the fight was out of the bow. We took McKay topside and tied him up in the cabin with Roma. Probably thinking of all that gold dust they spill into the ocean. Uh, I'll tell you, the next time I think I've got all the answers, I'll just remember this little expedition. No kidding, Mike. I don't know how I'm going to thank you enough. Ah, uh, forget it. Just uh, listen to Betty next time, will you? Skydiving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? When there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of Sea Hunt.